Welcome back to Daytona Beach, Florida. We're 24 hours away from the Great American Race, the Daytona 500, the big show today, the season opener for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. It's time for qualifying our coverage presented by GEICO. It's been a great speed week so far. Cloudy cool yesterday, much better here today. 70 degrees right now. The winds that were whipping this morning have calmed down high in the mid-70s. It's going to be a great afternoon for racing here on the beach. Some breaking news in the NASCAR Xfinity Series garage this morning. Let's get the report from Regan Smith. Good morning, Regan. Well, good morning, Adam. It's been a very active morning so far in the Xfinity Garage, as you just mentioned. The 66 car of Timmy Hill, he received an L2 penalty this morning for modifications to the nose piece of his race car. If you look here, this is the stock Toyota Camry nose. It's got a really indented area that allows some clean lines and a little bit of a crevice there. What the team did was they actually put some Bondo of substance basically to fill up that area into this section. You can see where NASCAR chipped away at it and found that right there. That is a no-no on these composite bodies. You're not a allowed to do that in this series there's no modifications that are allowed to be made to these bodies so what they've been assessed with is basically a 50 point penalty or excuse me 75 point penalty to team owner Daniel Long and then a $50,000 fine and six race suspension to crew chief Sebastian LaForge. They will be allowed to race today, and Sebastian LaForge can also work in the truck series garages as well as the cup garage. He cannot work in the Xfinity, Xfinity series garage for six weeks. So I hope you got all that because it, uh, it was a lot for me to remember all that. Uh, a tough break for a small team right now. They do have two other cars also that I want to note that were both good when they went through tech. They didn't have issues. This particular car, the 66, was sent out to an outside source to get the body work done and that's where the mistake happened great report Regan we see the numbers on the screen now but the good news in all of this is and we saw him smiling down on pit road Timmy Hill who on Thursday night locked his way into the Daytona 500 is going to be eligible to race with that car here today Mike and let me just tell you what the case may be Regan said it that's a small team there could have been damage to that nose and they're just trying to fix their car and get it to Daytona so they can go racing I'm sure they will appeal there'll be more on this story but don't convict Timmy Hill and his team for being guilty right off the bat that's a small small adjustment to the car I know it's illegal you can't do those things but if you think about a team that's just scratching and clawing to get to the racetrack there might be more to this story let's get to qualifying it's a big day here it's the season opener 40 cars on site to qualify only 36 positions we're gonna have some drama here in a matter of moments uh, today is a big day for guys wanting to get the pole at Daytona but there's four or five guys that just want to race at them and they've got to have a time fast enough to beat nine guys so they can lock in we've got two great stories to follow today who's gonna get the pole and who's gonna get to race and we look forward to covering it all it's the start of a big day live on FS1 as Speed Weeks 2020 continues happy to have you with us on this Saturday morning First cars on track, it's, it's Xfinity Series qualifying, presented by Geico. And before we pick up David Starr, let's hear from Ross Chastain. Hello, Matt Yoakum. Hey there, Double A, and Ross Chastain, he's getting ready to buckle into his car, and uh, he's got the gloves, getting the wheel set on here. You're always a great barometer of what we're about to see this afternoon here at Daytona Xfinity. So will it be a hybrid, or will it be like the February race last year up against the wall, or every man for himself in July? I do think, like you said, it'd be some kind of hybrid of the of both. Um, yeah, we, we won't sing. There's no way guys will single out like we did last February. We all learned our lesson. You got down to the end. No one could get to the lead. So we were probably too aggressive in July, and I realize that. So I'm really happy I'm in the black and green Nutrient Ag Solutions car. A.J. Allmendinger has the same paint scheme I had. Hopefully they take their aggression out on him, and uh, we can be clean and free. Guys, clean and free. That's what you want to be, right? And mark the tape. He said we will not see single file. I so don't, we hope that's the case. I don't try to ever guess. <laughs> I don't, you know these guys. You don't know what's up their sleeve or what's next. But here's the Whataburger Camaro for David Starr. David's under the weather a little bit this weekend, but he's pushing through it, huh? Ear infection yesterday missed final practice. Jeffrey Earnhardt jumped in. He's driving for Johnny Davis, JD Motorsports this year. First time on the board. 49.017 that's 183.61 miles per hour and we love us some johnny davis he brings some great cars to the racetrack underdog team but this is the kind of race i don't know how many of you watched the truck series last night on fs1 we had a barn burner for a finish and
Jordan Anderson got a career finish and almost pulled off the victory at the stripe. It was thrilling. I can't wait to see what these Xfinity guys do later today. You guys did a great job covering that last night. And Logano thought Anderson had it when they were coming through the trial, well, didn't he? Yes, and, and what an upset that would have been. Jordan's got such a big heart about racing. He tries his best to get a sponsor so he can get to the track. And uh, he got here last night and, and almost pulled off one of the biggest upsets in the history of the truck series. I think this guy, I, I mean, it would be a mild upset, but I think Ryan Sieg has a chance today driving that 39 car. It's the C. CMR Roofing Chevrolet. CMR Roofing was on Brett Moffitt's truck last night, so it's cool to see CMR being so heavily involved in the NASCAR world, and hopefully Ryan Sieg can give those guys a great run this afternoon. 48-021 for Ryan Sieg out of Tucker, Georgia. Let's go to Regan. Well, the guy making all the news so far today. Not the news he wanted to be making just yet is Timmy Hill. Timmy, how much of a distraction is the penalty and, and the fine that we have talked about already on air to you today as you get ready to hop in this car and try to go 180-plus miles an hour? Uh, the distraction won't, won't hurt us so much today. Uh, the VSI Racing and RoofClaims.com, uh, Toyota Supra, still going to be fast. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, we, we had to make a nose change. Uh, you know, for a small team, we, we do a lot of... We're using the parts, the same as we used last year. Unfortunately, we crashed it, uh, made some repairs, and it went through tech on practice day. It was no problem, but it's just NASCAR found it to be just over the line, and uh, we got to accept responsibility over that. Very unfortunate, but uh, this car is still going to be fast. We, we expect uh, good speed out of it here in qualifying coming up, and uh, can't think these guys enough to prepare a fast car. We're going to try to rebound from this, and uh, hopefully uh, between today's race and Sunday's race, we can recover financially and uh, just move on from it. Many of the things you hit on in the broadcast, Michael, it is a challenge for the small team. And as you said, reusing some parts that maybe were a little bit older for the small team. They'll uh, they'll overcome this, though. <laughs> I, I totally, it's a shame, Regan, and, and I totally get it. But uh, that, that's just a team trying to get to the racetrack and uh, unfortunate for sure. But I'm telling you, Adam, you, you won't be able to wipe that smile off Timmy Hill's face after what he accomplished on Thursday, putting himself in the Daytona 500. And like you said, they'll overcome this and move forward. Saw Jesse Little on track driving that four car for Johnny Davis. His time was 48.526. He is second of the three cars that has been out driving this weekend, the KSDT Series seating Chevrolet. You know, it's interesting that lap for seat, 48.02. I watched closely during practice yesterday. The fastest I saw was about a 48 flat. And so he's matched that. So I don't know how far down in the 47s they can go. I, I would have guessed when the broadcast started, 4780. If that's the case, see, going to be really close to the front. We'll see how the, that prediction holds up. And to remind everybody, it's uh, single car qualifying, obviously, single round. And they're going out by random draw. But the first 20 cars you see were outside the top 20 in owner points last year. Those last 20 cars that qualify were top 20 in owner points at the end of 2019, but it's all been done by random draw. And Jeff Green just wrapped up his lap. He is third of the four cars that have been out the 2000 Series champ driving this weekend for RSS Racing. And he's in the C2 Freight Resources Chevrolet. Now B.J. McLeod will start his run around the two and a half mile tri-oval. Another one of the JD Motorsports cars. See, so far he's tracking at the bottom of our four cars that have gone so far. But Adam, if you want to smile, you want to, you want to, you want to get a good feeling in your heart, go find B.J. McLeod at the racetrack. He is so happy that he gets to be a part of NASCAR and racing these vehicles. And, and I'm just, he, I always look for him, and I want to know the story behind what's going on in his world as as he uh, races his cars. The OPAP Chevrolet driving, as we said, for J.D. Motorsports, but he's got three cars in the field today from an owner's side of things. And B.J.'s lap is third. The time is 48-691. Five cars have been out, 35 to go from Daytona. While we were away, Austin Hill made his run in qualifying. He is fifth right now, 48-887, trying to make his second career start today in that Toyota for Shiggy Hattori. And seventh on the board of those seven that have been out there is Joe Nemechek. He went 49-18. And with that, we pick up the 16 of A.J. Allmendinger running eight races this year for Colleg. I think he's going to be a player this <laughs> afternoon. Yeah, for sure. He's got such talent behind the wheel. Anywhere we go, 
but man, that college team, the speed they bring to the super speedway tracks and the talent he has behind the wheel, understanding the draft, his experience, you're right, player today. And his qualifying run puts him eight, 51, so, 11. That, that is shocking, Regan. Well, relaxing here on the grid with Riley Herbst before he gets ready to go off for qualifying. He had to pull in the truck series race last night. Had an opportunity to maybe win that thing at the end. Things got a little bit crazy for you. How good is this car for today? Do you expect the same kind of racing? Yeah, man, I was really fast to a Tundra last night. Had some big runs, but just didn't pan out. But I uh, had a blast doing it. Uh, this Supra, I think, is going to be really fast as well. Uh, hopefully, we can get it two for two on poles and make it one victory lane for us this weekend. All right, good luck, Riley. Riley Herbst has got a lot of experience this week, Michael. Yeah, and, and, and some of it was good. <laughs> yeah. And other other parts of it weren't so great. What's going on with these college cars? Well, I, I mentioned Almondinger, and now Chastain is, is in the red here by a good margin. Yeah, so I don't get it. That's, that's weird. The, 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 there's, there's no way for me to tell the viewers what's going on here. Both those cars being that far off the pace, uh, there's, I don't, I don't know, I don't understand. I'm sure, I know one person that doesn't either is Ross. So two college cars have gone. They are currently eighth and ninth at the very bottom of the list and both over 50 seconds. And we felt like we would see times down in the 47s to win the pole. And we would have thought maybe those college cars would have a chance to get it done. Well, something was wrong with those cars. like. Uh, with, with the engine, that, that has to be what it's all about. Something was wrong with the engine. Maybe the cowl areas, something was up there. Um, because there's no way the 16's three seconds off. The, you know, there's a little bit of wind in the area, but I'm telling you, it would ha that would have to be a hurricane to slow him down that much. And, and a reminder that 40 cars here this weekend. Only 36 make the field today. And, you know, colleagues brought three cars. So from a points perspective, they don't have much to fall back on. And I would say the guy that's the most vulnerable likely is that 16 of A.J. Allmendinger. We'll continue to follow it, but that is very, very puzzling. And still to come, Justin Haley, who's driving that 11 car. They've got a three-car effort here this weekend. You think he's puzzled right now? I'd say he's nervous. Josh Balicki across the line. He is seventh. The time for the kid out of Wisconsin, 49.082 seconds. We're back here at Daytona and some big drama developing and qualifying for colleague racing. Let's get the latest in the garage with Regan. Look at these pictures. Well, guys, we're down here, uh, down here trying to figure out what's going on. The 10 car of Ross Chastain pulled in and completely had a left front brake rotor locked up, it appeared. I don't know that that was the same issue. I would have to assume on the 16 of AJ Helmendinger it was, but this tire was completely locked up. The tire was flat as he drove into the garage area right here. And obviously we see the fire crews right now that are uh, attempting to put this fire out in the car. Well, the teams want those hubs to be as lightweight and have as little drag as possible the brakes yeah they want them to be pulled back so uh there's there's always been technology where you try to gain advantages in that area regan uh it makes me wonder if maybe whatever their plan was uh there was probably a plan there in place that obviously it backfired we're a fourth of the way through qualifying 10 of 40 cars have been out and those two colleague vehicles right now at the back end and they were both part-time efforts a year ago. So as you start analyzing where everyone's going to be in this deal and, and who could go home because four cars will, I mean, you, you look at them right now and you get pretty nervous. And, and especially for Ross Chastain, who coming into this season driving for this team, not everybody, but many would have said he, maybe he's the favorite to win the championship and certainly one of those guys that would be a true contender to go out and get it done. <laughs> yeah, so... This is a setback, but just think about old Ross. Last year, he started out racing an Xfinity car, switched over to the truck series, won races, and made it to the play. He can overcome anything, I think, Regan. Well, it appears he's going to have to overcome a lot right now today. Ross, can you give us any kind of insight as to what took place, not only when you're on the racetrack, but when you came back into the garage as well? Yeah, um, some kind of mechanical failure there with the left front. Um, could tell right away that something was wrong, but wanted to try to post our lap. And... Um, you know, could tell we were down on RPM and down on speed. So, um, had a 
a problem, whatever it was, just mechanical failure and then driver error to keep driving it. That was pretty silly. So um, now it's on fire and um, don't don't do that, drivers. Don't keep driving it when you know something's wrong. So just stop. Um, so yeah, I don't know. You mentioned something about points and, and getting in the race. I have no idea. Never thought that would be an issue. So. Um, I don't know. This is uh, this is racing, though. We speculated possibly early on that maybe it was something engine related, but for your car, we can safely say this was related to the left front corner of the car, right? Yeah, something with the, the hub or the or the brakes was hung up. Um, yeah, I uh, yeah something in mechanically. No, the motor was fine. Um, everything felt good there. I don't know what happened to AJ, but um, we definitely have something. And I could feel it season up, but I wanted to finish and I wanted to get it back here so we could work on it. I should have just stopped on the on the flat out there and uh, got out, but um, live and learn. Michael, you know as well as I do, it's very difficult. When you go to qualify at these racetracks, you know you got to post a number. It's tough to tell yourself to stop, as Ross just said. Yeah, and you look at that tachometer, and it's showing 6,500 instead of 7,500, and you're thinking, holy cow, what is going on with my car? Very concerning, and obviously uh, that team's got a lot of questions they need to answer. 36 of Alex LeBay went out in qualifying, driving for Mario Goslin. He's now third. Good job by him, 48-58. Also saw, saw Mike Harmon on track. He is 10th right now at 49-37. And here's Cesar Baccarella, 13th here a couple of years ago. First time you and I would seen him come and doing this NASCAR thing. How fun is that to say? Cesar Baccarella. <laughs> Good job. It's hard to say until you get it down, and then it's then fun, it's to, fun say. to say. You're right. Matt? Adam drama in the garage, but a lot of excitement around Jeb Burton back in the eight car LS tractor on the hood. A lot of excitement for you this year. For sure. We're excited to be here in Daytona with a new sponsor, LS tractor. It's a great brand for the Burtons. Um, just got a lot going on here today. Got a bunch of good partners on board. Uh, hopefully my car can get the pole. Um, they brought a good hot rod, so we'll see what we can do. But I uh, just thank Xfinity for all they do for uh, this series. Just glad to be a part of it. Um, now, I want to take a minute to talk about my dad's foundation. Uh, his youth outreach program is introducing kids to the outdoors, and we just uh, announced a really cool uh, race winning idea. You can, you can drive with dad or I on the racetrack at South Boston Speedway, so check it out. 2002 Daytona 500. Can you imagine that? Driving with Ward back on the track. <laughs> And, and Jeb was nine when Ward won that race 18 uh, years ago, or in 2002. And he, he talks about what a great day that was and how much he enjoyed be, being around that. That was a neat moment. What about that, that car? It's a second chance for Jeb. It's a second chance for Daniel Hemrick as well. And if I remember back in the day, didn't Dale Jr.'s, wasn't the name of his team Chance 2 Racing? It was. So we're, we're revisiting Chance 2 and giving these guys a second chance. And there's no two guys in the garage area more deserving than that opportunity than Jeb Burton and Daniel Hemrick. That's that's special. And I'm, I'm thankful Dale Jr.'s down there owning these Xfinity cars, being a part of this series. Uh, that just tells you how much Dale Jr. loves racing and wants to be a part of this sport. Here's Matt Mills. We, we talked to Ross Chastain about what was going on with those college cars. Now let's hear from A.J. Allmendinger. We're definitely very disappointed, A.J. Allmendinger, with that time. One of the faster cars here yesterday from what we saw. Give us a little insight as to what happened to your car. We saw the left front on Ross Chastain's car locked up when he came in. Was it the same issue on yours? Uh, we're not really sure yet. Uh, I haven't I haven't spoke to, to Chris Rice yet about what he saw over there. Um, we didn't have any smoke or anything out of ours. I just felt like it was laying down. Uh, so we got to kind of go into detail more and, and see what exactly the issue is. Um, unfortunate, whatever it is, uh, you know, we, I think we had to make it in on speed, so that's not going to get the job done. But, uh, you know, everybody here at College Racing, if I'm not in the race, then, you know, Ross and, and Justin will, uh, will take it to the front. They'll be fine and uh, still try to get team victory. Disappointing for A.J. Adam. Last time we were here, he finished third. Didn't get to keep that finish, but had a fast race car. Uh, this team really was looking strong if they'd had all three cars together today. I just go to the humility of this sport. Uh, last summer when we came here, Regan talked about it. Colleg Racing had never won in the Xfinity Series. They, they went here. They went later in the year. This weekend, they bring a cup car for the first time. Justin Haley qualifies in on speed for the Daytona 500. You just sensed that this was a team skyrocketing to be a big player in the sport, and, and today they get knocked down. And as you know, Michael, you've experienced it. That's just how it goes in the NASCAR world. Yeah, it's, it's, it's 
also defines your character, you're going to get knocked down. You just got to get back up. If you get back up and keep trying, then you're not beat. You're not beat till you quit. And that team doesn't have any quit in them. I know Chris Rice and, and the leaders, Matt Pollock, all those guys, they'll figure out what happened here and overcome it. Timmy Hill puts a, a time on the board. Winds up, winds up in the seventh spot so far. Got T Hill in seventh and A Hill in eighth. 16 cars have now been on track four away from the midpoint of this qualifying session. And the next man we will see, Chris Cockrum in the 25, out of Conyers, Georgia, 33 years old. And as he makes his qualifying run, let's go to Matt. Adam always a threat. Back when he was in the trucks or even in Xfinity on the speedways, is Brandon Jones some solid top five. So what do you expect to see today? Is it is it tougher for alliances to stay together just because of the, the youth and experience in the field? Yeah, I think so, man. Uh, first off, this is so cool to be able to run this interstate car with uh, Bobby and Coach getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. And uh, I've known Bobby for, Bobby for a long time and actually tried to get him to be a driver coach at one point, too. So that's pretty cool to be able to do that. Um, this race is going to be interesting, uh, especially after watching some of the some of the cup racing that's been taking place. The truck racing was wild. I think that's a whole different deal. Um, but we've got some youth, like you mentioned, in the race. Uh, hopefully they did their study, and then they're going to know uh, exactly when the, to make the right moves. I watched the race back last year, uh, running third. I just don't think I made the right moves at the right time. This year I'm going to really play with timing those runs right. I've got Stevie Reeves on the roof spotting for me, so I've got some experience up there, um, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to hearing how he does. So all in all, this is going to be a great day for us, and uh, hopefully doing qualifying we're going to be as fast as I can spend on the Internet and uh, get out front. Good luck. Thanks, guys. I like Brandon Jones. Got that big win last fall. And he, he he is feeling it. I mean, I think he's as confident as he's ever been. The elder statesman now over at Joe Gibbs Racing. So much success for them over the years. So 17 cars have made a qualifying attempt. 31, the top 31 in this session will lock in on speed. So that means if you beat nine guys with 40 here, you're in a good position to go racing today, Michael. That's right. Chris Cochran won up in eighth spot so far have have made this race they know they're going to race and that's also going to include timmy hill jeff green and everyone above him so the rest of these guys need to beat those nine races cars so they know that they're going to be in the show this afternoon and uh all that spells is trouble for aj Almendinger. you know he's not going to beat anyone tommy joe martins puts himself in the 13th position this is a race team that's brand new started their own operation i talked to him in the garage yesterday and he was nervous because he just didn't know what to expect as they put these cars together as we said he's 13th now of the 18 who have made a qualifying run back to regan I, say that. Well, I was able uh, able to catch up with Chris Rice, president of College Racing. Chris, we saw two of your cars have problems. First, is it the same problem on both cars with that left front corner of the race car? And how concerned are you with what's going to happen with the 11 car, Justin Haley here? Well, I'm I'm really concerned, and yes, both cars had the same issue, and it's uh, it's crazy. It happened when it happened, um, you know, and. I, right now, I don't know exactly whether it was a hub or a brake or something like that, but we'll we'll dig into it, get the Tim fixed up. Don't look like the 16 to make it because it doesn't have points, uh, even though it passed winter. But um, you know what? We'll we'll dig deep. We're a strong team. Let's hope the 11 here doesn't have a problem. He goes and sits out on the pole and shows how strong we are. We appreciate the insight. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, Chris, uh, a great job as general manager at Colleg Racing. And making a qualifying effort here is Colin Garrett, 19 years old, from Elmo, Georgia, driving for Sam Hunt. Now, he's got two career starts as a driver, but this is only their second event as a team. Uh, the, the owner, Sam, has got a, a connection to, to J.D. Gibbs. J.D. was very big in helping him get going in his racing career after he graduated from Virginia Commonwealth. They come here this weekend with high expectations, and right now he is on the fringe, 12th out of those 19 cars that have been on track. He needs to beat a couple of more to ensure that he will race. And if he races, that could mean that Ross Chastain doesn't. So that's a story we're certainly going to keep following. Looking at the 78. This is Vinnie Miller driving for B.J. McLeod. Talked about B.J. being a driver, driving that zero car here at Daytona, owning cars. I think it's safe to say he's all in, right? 100%.
Halfway through qualifying at Daytona, at the top of the board, it's Ryan Sieg. It's a gorgeous day in Central Florida. I love that drone shot. If you're going to be good in qualifying at Daytona, you better have a good launch. <laughs> Listen to that. So that was him leaving. What's your evaluation there, Michael? It was perfect. He, he didn't have too much wheel spin. He nailed the gears. He got up to speed and, and it, just like you would hope to. And you can see his time's just barely faster than Ryan Sieg. This is a, the first real test, I think, to that lap that Sieg laid down. And you can see why I think that <laughs> those cars are running nearly dead even. Looks like Jeb was able to continue the momentum and pull away and grab the top spot so far, far by just over a tenth of a second. Yeah, Ryan Sieg went 48.021 for Jeb Burton. 47.91, top of the board. Good job. Shut her down. Give me water tap, please. You don't even need me. I mean, I, I was going to give his time and, and say that he's at the top, and, and we've got that taken care of courtesy of the pit box. Here comes Riley Herbst. He has taken the green flag. The launch right here screen for Chase Briscoe. That compared well to what Jeff Burton did. He, he had plenty of RPM. It didn't lug. There was minimal wheel spin. I think that Chase Briscoe should be really happy with that launch. And it's frustrating, Adam, as a driver. If you chuck that motor down or boil your tires too much, you feel like you let your team down. Riley Herbst trying to top the speed put up by Jeb Burton and get his, he'd like to get his second pole in as many days. He started out front in the truck event last night. Here comes the 18 a bit behind, Michael. Yeah, it's interesting the ghost car shows well that uh, off turn four, Jeb was able to continue the momentum. He was faster than both those cars. Uh, the ghost car showed it so well. He was faster than both those cars on the exit of turn four. 47.91 for Burton, 47.98 for Herbst, who does go to second on the board as we go to the onboard camera of Chase Briscoe. Now it's Chase's job, and thank goodness for this visor cam. You can see the rough ride he has and how important it is for him to have that left front corner right down on that yellow line. The shortest distance around the racetrack is what these drivers are trying to achieve. That was a nice exit to turn two. You could see he kept it really low. He didn't wander up the hill. And it looks like maybe gaining a little. No, now starting to lose as he hit toward turn three. It's just too bad you can't draft off of that ghost car, Michael. Yeah, it is. And that's what Chase is thinking. But again, you can see the speed of Jeff Burton. It's, it's more off turn four than anywhere else. That could mean maybe his engine ran at a better temperature. You know, these engines lose power as they get too hot, and the teams tape off the front grill so that uh, the cars will slip through the air for these qualifying laps, and maybe Jeb's engine just performed better at the temperature off turn four. That's what it appeared to be. Briscoe is fourth. Before the Daytona 500, download the Fox Sports Super 6 app and play Super 6 NASCAR for free for a chance to win up to $10,000 in a progressive jackpot, meaning that if there's no winner this week, they'll add another ten grand to the prize next week. Get your picks in now. Jeb Burton leading the way in qualifying. Let's go to Regan. Well, Justin Haley is standing here by his race car. You are, are very calm, cool, and collected right now. We spoke to your team president, Chris Rice, just a little while ago. He said he was concerned for this car. So what are they telling you to do if you feel anything wrong with it out there? Yeah, I mean, two out of three of them went out so far and had some catastrophic issues. So um, for us, you know, hopefully that doesn't happen. We, we're we looking really good at yesterday after practice, and uh, this car was as fast as Xfinity Internet, but now it's... Uh, Looking a little shaky out there, so we, we've lost two dancing partners. Hopefully they even make the race at this point, but I know everyone on this college racing team did a great job, so um, hopefully it's as fast as it was yesterday and nothing happens. But uh, right now my heart rate's a little more elevated than it was uh, a few minutes ago. 
All right, Justin, we'll be watching. Thank you. You never know until the final lineup is, is set based on the NASCAR rule book. But, but regardless of what Haley does, because of what happened last year, you got to feel like he's going to be uh, in good shape. Ray Black Jr. made his qualifying run, and he is now in the sixth position as we watch the 19 of Brandon Jones go on a flyer. You know, Adam, I talked about the temperature of the engine. Maybe is why Jeb's car pulled so well off turn four. You also have to consider the wind. It's a windy morning. The wind is blowing down the front straightaway if someone could get a better gust of wind we're just talking you know less than a tenth of a second is what these teams are looking for and look again off turn four here comes the the eight car gaining ground that totally shows you where his speed came from it's a photo finish in, in qualifying <laughs> jones is second behind burton 47 93 matt and Justin Allgaier is buckling in. Now, our informal poll on the 2020 season, we had it basically the big three for this year, ABC, Allgaier, Briscoe, and Sindrick. I know you love hearing that, but the biggest thing on your agenda at this juncture, getting a win at Daytona. Oh, absolutely. You know, obviously, to get a win here, you lock your way into the playoffs. You can focus on a lot of other things throughout the course of the season, but uh, everybody at Junior Motorsports works their tail off to, uh, to be a part of this race team, to start 10 years with Brant Professional Agriculture. Always, always a great uh, partner of ours, and, and it's so much fun to be around. And we've got a great group of guys in this Xfinity Series this year. Um, you know, we're going to see what happens. We're going to go out there and have a good time. And, you know, there's a lot of inexperience. And I think that's going to be the hardest part. So hopefully uh, hopefully our car is as fast as Xfinity Internet this morning. And uh, we can qualify good. And then you get a good starting spot and race well. So we'll see what happens. I keep hearing that it's really fast. The Internet. <laughs> I'll tell you who else has got it going in the speed category. Myatt Snyder. Series debut later today, driving for RCR. And just like we always see when we come here to Daytona, they've got speed. He's quickest right now, 47.76. Can anybody get to that number, Michael? Uh, yes, I think that's possible. I don't think... I don't think you get into the 60s, but a, a high 70, mid 70, that's that's possible. We'll have to see how these guys tune up and go after it. RCR is always strong on these big super speedway tracks. They've won seven out of the last 12 poles here at Daytona. That's faster than Xfinity Internet. 14 cars left to qualify. I take Snyder and you take the other 14. Is that a fair bet right now? That is a fair bet. Okay. I, I will take you up on that for a fine bet you're on some sort here's we'll Robbie Lyons we'll define that later driving for Johnny Davis in that 15 car four entries this weekend for JD Motorsports housed in South Carolina just an update one car that we know has to qualify in on time is Colin Garrett and right now he's only beaten seven cars, so that team's in trouble because most of the cars left are heavy hitters, right, Adam? Yeah, second second 20 cars were the top 20 in owner's points a year ago. And here's Josh Williams. I like this guy. <laughs> He's awesome. I saw, uh, we were at Pocono for the Xfinity race, and he was pushing his car through inspection, had a tape measure in his hand, one hand, a hammer in the other. I saw him at dinner the other night. I said, where's your tape measure? He said, it's in the truck. I can go get it if you need me to. He not only drives the car, but he works on it, helps his team to try to get better week in and week out. And that is a respectable lap that he's putting together. You know, he's from Florida. He's got two Carrarca wins. And uh, you mentioned seeing him at dinner. His wife was not with him. He said he's missed Valentine's Day with her now 10 consecutive years because he's always here in Daytona racing. So see the tape on the grill? Yeah. Yeah, that spells out his wife's name. Oh, there we go. That's so sweet. Yeah. That's a good shot by Drano, too, at 180-some miles an hour, getting the name in there. That could, that could pay dividends for this man, not only on the track having that tape on there, but at home as well, getting some... Uh, Brownie points. Drano's a regular Chuck Woolery up on the camera stand. You know that? Making love connections everywhere. Certainly. Here's Noah Gregson. You and I talked about him. Regan and I talked about him as well during final practice yesterday. I'm, I'm really excited to see what he does in 2020. Not, you know, he, he proved he has the talent behind the wheel. Long about May of last year, he started to really put things together. But 
What I love about him is his work ethic. He's doing everything he can, watching films, in the gym, to be a better racer. And then B, he, he's entertaining. <laughs> he's on, on social media. He's always got a good story to tell, a lot of fun, a great character. So you like to see when people get, there's two pieces to this. There's the competition and there's the entertainment. And he understands that. Grown a lot in the last year. Drove full time in the Gander trucks for Kyle Busch. Made the move to the Xfinity Series. Driving now for Junior Motorsports his sophomore season. And he's going to have a good starting spot. And the season opener later this afternoon, he is seventh of the 29 cars that have made a qualifying run. 11 to go. And you see it in our pylon, a reminder of our coverage later today. We're in the studio with race day, 1.30 Eastern time, Shannon Spake. And the Mac attack, America's crew chief Larry McReynolds and Jamie McMurray, both have won Daytona 500s. And then we'll be live here at Daytona, 2.30 Eastern time, when Brad Keselowski comes to the booth with Clint Boyer. Good luck. Thank you very much. I'll need it. I might be announcing my retirement around 5 o'clock local time. Well, I had a lot of fun last night with Joey Logano, and I'm sure you're going to have a ball today talking with Clint and Pez and telling the folks at home what is actually going on in those drivers' brains, what they're seeing, what they're thinking. They're entertaining, but they're very informative. There seems to be a theme there. That's two things that are important. You and I are going to work a lot together in the Xfinity booth this year, but we announced all the names the other day. Tony Stewart, the Bush brothers together at Bristol. It's going to be awesome. Brett Moffat is done with his qualifying effort. He goes 16th. Ten cars remain here at Daytona. Ten cars remain in qualifying here at Daytona for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Top two right now on the board, Myatt, Snyder, Jeb, Burton, and their takeoff was critical when you look at the difference in, in where they are numbers-wise, Michael. It's just simply a 21 was a faster car. I think Burton did his job perfectly getting off the line. They left evenly, but 21 just consistently pulled away on that launch. and They've got their stuff together in that RCR car. Jeremy Clements. South Carolina native driving the team family car and he qualifies 21st. Don't worry if you're a Jeremy Clements fan. He can shove his way up through the field and be a part of this story later on this afternoon. I promise you. Repairablevehicles.com and, and I is the sponsor and I and I saw repairables.com on his shirt the other day and I said, have you changed things around? He said, I, I had a hard time saying repairablevehicles.com, so they got a new domain and I'm gonna help promote that. So good to see Jeremy out compete in one career win and he's someone that could pull an upset later today as we look at Justin Allgaier and how he compares to the man who's quickest, Myatt Snyder. What about 10 years for Brant? agriculture on the side of Justin Allgaier's cars. That's a great relationship. I really appreciate the job that Justin does and the Brandt family for being here in NASCAR. You've been a team owner. You understand <laughs> how hard it is to, one, get a sponsor, and then, two, to maintain them. So that huge tribute to he and his entire group. Look at Myatt. <laughs> he knows that was... That was a, a worthy competitor there that could have went out and put up a lap that took the pole away from him, but Myatt still on top. Ran full-time in the trucks a couple of years ago, did Myatt. NASCAR Euro Series last year where he got a couple of podiums. He's a rookie, so is this guy, Harrison Burton, running the full season for Joe Gibbs Racing in that 20 car. No no pressure driving this car, huh? You're just <laughs> following Eric Jones and Christopher Bell the last few years? Yes, and when Eric Jones and Christopher Bell showed up in the truck series, we said these aren't only cup winners. These could be champions. They have that kind of talent behind the wheel. Has the same opportunity to show that he is worthy of that same type of recognition. Won the K&N East title, moved to trucks, unable to get to victory lane a season ago for Kyle Busch, but the door was open to move to the Xfinity Series, and here he is, driving that Toyota Supra for Joe Gibbs Racing, and a good qualifying effort puts him fifth. Look at all those Gibbs cars right there together. Jones, Herbst, and Burton, and another sip of water for Myatt Snyder, who now has to wait for seven more to roll out, and then he can celebrate his first pole in his first start, here's C.J. McLaughlin. <laughs> 
CJ a little bit high on the track there. You ideally would want to run right on that yellow line. He's up the hill a bit. And I'll tell you, Adam, that's not necessarily as easy as you might think because it's rough down there and the cars are set up and designed to, to turn, you know, to go to the left. That's what the car wants to do. You get too far down on that yellow line and hit a bump or two, it could shoot your car over onto that line and then you'll scrub your nose and all the, all the effort you did to be close to it is out the window because the scrubbing of the nose will slow it down. He's driving a third car for the Sieg family. Jeff Green is here in the 38. Talked about Ryan Sieg in the 39 and not bad for McLaughlin. He goes 16th. Said he's really benefited from having series champion Jeff Green around and what his knowledge has meant to help coach him in the early portion of his career as J.J. Yaley hits the track. Let's do another launch, Adam. Those are fun. I think we should. And we're going we're gonna to try to listen closely and see if Haley's going to have the same issues his teammates had. I've been awaiting this run. It was more of a conservative exit, if you will. No wheel spin. A little bit of, of lug of the engine. Didn't have it quite wound up like the two we rode with earlier. See how that relates. See Yaley there with a about a second and a half off the pace. He's 32nd. That's dangerous. Yes, it is. Colin Garrett needs to beat one more car, and I think that would put him in the show. If this car has the issues his teammates have, that's a big break for Garrett. But it doesn't. <laughs> Look at that. Not even close. <laughs> Hear a little scraping of the road there, and then he loses a little bit of ground. A little scraping is good. That means you're doing your job getting the travels right. This 21 car, it's the closest challenge he's had, right? And it's close. Time for Myatt Snyder, 47-763. And Justin Haley just behind him when you look at our ghost car as he comes off turn four. Back to the trioval. Haley is second, 47-84 the time, and Myatt Snyder can breathe easy one more time with only four cars now remaining. Myatt Snyder did a nice job in the truck. There's his father, Marty. Did a nice job competing, contending. This is a great opportunity for that young man. Last four cars, the first you see here, Joe Grapp Jr. Then it'll be the one of Michael Annette who won this race a year ago. Brandon Brown and the 22 of Austin Sendrick driving for Team Penske will be our final car to go in qualifying and a good start to this lap for Joe Grapp Jr. who started a few races for RCR in that 21 car last year. What about SS Greenlight Racing, Bobby Dodder and that team bringing a car that can run up in the top five and qualifying. That's a heck of an accomplishment. Look at some of the teams Graf is going to beat in this session. Well, Ray Black Jr.'s teammate is 12, so they brought both cars here ready to play. Real nice job for Graf. Student at New York University, he is fourth. But not good enough to knock off the provisional pole sitter. That's Myatt Snyder. Here comes Michael Annette. That's got to be a career best run for that team and, and Graf Jr. Mike Lynette likes this place, doesn't he? One year ago, he loved it. <laughs> you know, that race went green, the final 37 laps, and I, I talked to Michael in the garage the other day, and so what did you think about a year ago? He said, I know everybody else thought it was boring because there were no cautions late. We just had one long green flag run. See, it worked out pretty good for me. I, I thought it was just fine. And he's got a good lap going here in qualifying, Michael. Just trying to be precise, do his job. He did it a year ago here and got to victory lane. 
But he's losing a little bit of ground off turn four. Oh, drafting back up. <laughs> And he's now second. 47-817 for Michael Annette. But not good enough to knock off Myatt Snyder, who's visiting with his father in anticipation of a pole in his first career start. Only two cars remain. The first is Brandon Brown out of Virginia. A family-owned team went from the 86 last year to the 68 this year because that's the number he drove go-karts as a kid with his dad. It's a neat family story and looks like he's got a pretty good car as well. It does. I noticed in drafting practice yesterday that, that he was able to latch onto the back of three of those Joe Gibbs cars and, and pull up on them. So uh, that told me right then he's got the car he needs to go win this race if he can put it in the right position. It's plenty fast enough to do so and respectable qualifying effort here as well. And with a big three gone, a lot of young drivers, inexperience in the series this year, you feel like the door is open for someone to not just surprise today, but maybe even surprise us come playoff time. Maybe Brandon Brown is that guy. The graduate of Coastal Carolina qualifies 11th and only one remains. It's Austin Sendrick. Sender doesn't look like he's going to have anything for our pole sitter, Schneider. And as soon as Sendrick finishes his qualifying effort, we will sort through the numbers to determine the four cars that will go home. But definitely on the list of possibilities, Ross Chastain and A.J. Allmendinger who had problems early in this session. And there is little doubt now that it's going to be Myatt Snyder who leads him to the green later on today. A confident smile for the 25-year-old from Charlotte, North Carolina. In his first start, he's going to lead him to the green later this afternoon. Regan? Well, Maya, Maya, Maya Snyder, big smiles down here. A hug with your dad right there. A very cool moment for you. Your first career start, you're going to lead the field to the green at Daytona. Does that make you nervous at all? Well, uh, it's just interesting. So the la last couple of days have been interesting. I've, I've gone to school, basically, because this is completely different from the truck series and how the truck series races. So, uh, But I'm just blessed for the opportunity to race at, uh, at Richard Childress Racing. Um, you know, Richard actually came over and talked to me yesterday in practice. So that was a cool experience. You know, he's got a lot of advice and a lot of wisdom. Um, but yeah, we've got a, we've got an insanely fast race car, obviously. So I'm just so stoked to be with these guys. Um, Tax Slayer coming on board is, is cool. So yeah, man, I just I can't put it into words. You know, the first career start, first career pole. So, yeah, cars is as fast as Xfinity Internet. Tax Slayer is a great partner. I'm, I'm speechless, man. This is awesome. What did you do? You mentioned you went to school and, and have been studying up to get ready for this race. What did you do to go to school? Well, it's just there's a lot you can do at a super speedway as a driver to, you know, to make it make your car better you got to shift at the right points you got to be smooth on the wheel you just got to basically be as smooth as lap as possible and I've, actually if people are paying attention you could see that i was like half a lane higher than a net i know he was going to be the closest guy to challenge me but i was about a half lane higher and i was just kind of letting the car do whatever it wanted so um so yeah just but it, it you know to answer your first question no i'm not nervous because i've rcr has brought me such a great car and a great opportunity and Derek Nealon's a great spotter so um this is just a this is just gonna be a good race I can already tell it's good to have a to have a good day all right congratulations Matt Matt well a guy who was first last year not on pole today but at the end of the race was Michael Annette you know what it feels like to win here at Daytona coming back your notebook even more packed do you feel even more confident this year than a year ago yeah definitely I mean we just we know what it's like to run up front I'll be honest with you I didn't have a whole lot of laps up front at Super Speedways till last year. So I think uh, just coming in this season, leading a bunch of laps at, at every Super Speedway race last year and just watching the hard work these guys put in this American Heart Association car in the off season, you know, Hendrick engines, it just gives you all the confidence in the world to go into a race like today.
you come back here with a lot of excitement, but also mixed emotions because a very close family friend uh, that you felt like was family, Todd and Janet Bodine, lost Janet's mother, Grandma, just a few weeks ago. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a tough week. You know, care so much about Janet, so it's definitely tough. You can hear the emotion in his voice. He's wearing uh, on the roof of the car a very special decal he hopes to take to Victory Lane one more time. Special lady. Yeah, we send our thoughts and prayers to Todd and Janet and the entire family. Sad time for them, and I know that they've had a, a difficult time dealing uh, with the loss of Janet's mother. So we, we send our condolences. Front row later today, Myatt Snyder with Michael Annette. The last time a driver won the pole in their series debut right here at Daytona six years ago. Dylan Kwasniewski was able to do it, and today it happened for Myatt Snyder driving for Richard Childress Racing. More qualifying coverage from Daytona when we return on FS1. I think it was you in 2019, Michael, that said, we got to talk about the big three in the Xfinity Series. It was Reddick Bell and Custer. So that got us to thinking since that trio has graduated on now to the Cup Series, who's going to be the big three this year? And we kind of all agree it will be this group with Justin Allgaier as the championship favorite. How about Cindric getting on the board? Matt Yoakum? Not only on the board, but I think he could be one of those guys that could steal the headlines at day's end. In fact, when you look at the past three speedway races of fourth and two fifths, when you look at just how you progress, is it more like each chapter you've learned something new and you keep compounding that? Well, I was joking about the law averages with you. You know, if you look at my first three Speedway Xfinity starts, I was on my lid on the second one here. So uh, it works in, in different ways, but uh, I feel like I understand the way things work. You know, I've definitely put time into it because it's, it's a different uh, strength to understand than what we do on most weekends. So I've spent my time with Coleman, my spotter. I was up here for the duels. I was up here for the truck race last night in the cold and the wind. Um, I'm excited. Our money line for Mustang will race really good. We didn't really expect to qualify that great. So I think 15th is about what we expected. So uh, hopefully we can uh, avoid the first few early ones and uh, try to make a difference. You told me yesterday that you want to be an influencer on the Speedway races. Explain. Yeah, being an influencer, I, I feel like that just means being a part of the show, being a part of the picture. You know, I, I think the trucks put on an amazing show last night, and some of that was because those guys uh, raced really well. Some of that was because those trucks really raced really well. So hopefully we can give the uh, the fans some of that tonight or today. Is that also dictating runs and who may want to go with you because they know you're going to be aggressive and go into the front? It's plus or minus. You know, the, the tough part is for, for us is that we've got two Fords. And yeah, Chase and I are on two different teams, but you know we've been teammates. You know it's the Ford Brotherhood, but there's only two of us, so uh, we've definitely got to make our own strides. Uh, if we if we're around each other, we'll help each other. But you know there's a lot of strong JRM cars. There's there's obviously the Colleg cars have been fast in the past. So uh, trying to be able to put yourself in the right situations, like I said, in, influence the race is important because that means you're you're doing something, whether it's you're pushing or if you're leading or you're blocking. So Briscoe and Cindric, Adam, I think that's brothers from a different mother. We'll have, well, we'll have two Ford drivers in the booth with us today, Matt. We're going to have Keselowski and Boyer up here, so we look forward to that. And we were talking about the big three and everything they did last year. How do you process these numbers for Bell, Custer, and Reddick? We, we could see it early in the season, Adam. They just had their stuff together, and I think it's interesting. I know we all voted on who the big three is going to be this year. I don't think it's defined yet. I believe there still needs to be more information because I would have put Ross Chastain on that list as well because I think he's got that kind of talent. Obviously, a stumble here today, which is a huge story for that team. Um, we'll see if they can overcome it. And I know Ross, like I said earlier, he, he would be he'll be all into overcoming that adversity. A long year ahead to see who the superstars become. Let's go to Regan. Well, I had to do a double take on the board to make sure I had the right number for Harrison Burton, Burton this year in the 20 car, not the 18. I've, I've already mixed it up a couple times. You're going to roll off eighth today in your first Xfinity race at Daytona. Are you ready for this? It's going to be wild. Heck yeah, I'm ready. I watched the truck race last night. Some chaos going on there. Got me all excited and ready to go. Um, I like eighth. I feel like it's a good starting spot. You know, we're up towards the front. Uh, the outside, I feel pretty good about being up top, uh, not being pinched down from the outside lane up top. So, hey, we'll go see what it's got and hopefully have a good run. Just uh, really cool to bring Dex Imaging to the Xfinity Series full-time this year, so hopefully we can do them and Toyota Proud. 
I, you talk about the inside line, the outside line, a lot of thought process here as to where the cars might line up today. So where do you think you want to line up? Am I going to assume the outside? And I want to know also your dad, Jeff Burton. He was pretty good at the Speedway stuff. Yeah. couple wins. Uh, is he putting any pressure on you to, to go out and have a good day? Well, you know, he's, uh, he's a competitive guy, so he's always putting a little pressure on me, but not on any pressure I'm not already putting on myself. So um, for me, I, I like to go with whichever line has more cars in it, right, and, and has the, the energy going. I think this race is going to be a lot of aggressive moves like it was the the su uh, the, the summer race last year, um, you know, with Ross walking all over the place and, and doing a good job there. So I hope today's race is like that and we can put it on a good show. A lot of these guys tell me that they're going to be very aggressive today. We'll have to look forward to that this afternoon. And you mentioned Harrison's dad. Jeff won the summertime race here at Daytona back in 2000. You know who's faster than our pole setter, Myatt Snyder? The Thunderbird pilots. Huh? Thought you were going to say <laughs> Xfinity Internet again. Well, yeah, and this drone's <laughs> pretty quick, too. The Xfinity Series qualifying at Daytona, presented by GEICO, is complete. 36 cars make the field. Here are the four that failed to qualify. Ross Chastain, A.J. Allmendinger with Colleg Racing, joined by Colin Garrett and Tommy Joe Martins. Those are the four drivers that missed the show. Let's go to Matt Yoakum. Well, Adam, when you talk a lot about youth in the field, there's one guy who has a huge notebook and has former series champion Jeff Green. He has so much experience in these speedway races, but you're not going to be behind the wheel. You're going to be in the pit. Why? Uh, well, Ross uh, Chastain didn't make the race. They had some issues qualifying, so they were able, we're, we're able to work a deal with them. They worked a deal with us, and uh, for Sieg Racing, it's probably the best uh, step forward. Uh, we had a pretty fast race car. I always look forward to these races, and uh, my role in this sport is a little bit different this year. I'm going to be doing a lot of crew chiefing on our 93 car, so I'll, I'll reverse over to that today, do that, and uh, have a fun day over there. But I was I was really looking forward to that. I think we have a car that we can go out there and run, you know, top 10 when it's all said and done, and anytime you put yourself in that position, you have a chance to win. So I always look forward to it, and then over the winter time, I was really looking forward to coming down here because I knew we'd have a great piece, and we did. Uh, but uh, further not, we're going to, I guess we'll pull for the 93 and the 39 now. Jeff, you've been in a situation before where you've had someone get in your car seeking relief or you've done relief for someone else and it's always about the measurement of the pedals or the angle of the steering column or, or the way the seat is. It's a lot to get accustomed to, especially in today's racing because it's it's much like a cocoon for the driver. Yeah, we're also myself are Really close to the same. I probably got a little, little bit on weight on him, but uh, our height and stuff is the same. So he'll fit fine in it. And I think the car is good enough to be where he needs to be at the end of the day. So he'll be fun. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks. Well, sitting here with Ross Chastain, we have gone through the emotion spectrum today together. Now, I walked over here. We thought maybe you were in. Then you were out. Now we just hear in Jeff Green's interview right there that he's actually going to give up his seat. You're going to end up in his race car later this afternoon. Have you ever experienced the start to the season quite like today? Well, Yes, I have. I have lived this before. It rained at Homestead uh, my first time down there in a truck, and we, we got in one of Rod's trucks. So um, thank you to the Sieg family. That's um, very, very generous of, of Jeff and everybody and Rod Sieg and all them. And um, still a Chevy, so ECR motor. Um, but, yeah, it's what you were just telling me, what, what he just said was the first time I had heard it. So that's um, way to capture it on TV, man. That's, uh, that's good broadcasting. <laughs> We, uh, we, we like to build emotion here at Fox and, and certainly got that from you. Uh, let's talk about this season, too. You didn't expect to come down here and have this happen. We were discussing before we got on camera that points never even crossed your mind. So with that said, does the point structure now maybe make this a little bit easier for this team, for this team to not be in the race, even though you will be in the race? Yeah, I mean, right. We, Yeah, this was never even a... a, a not even a thing we i mean we talked about it we were in the mid 20s and in, in owner points so we thought that would be good and knew that aj and i had won a race but then we found out that's only past winners only get in on rain so i've i've already with wayne ott and he has taken me through the whole scope of how this works now and now i understand it now i wish we would have gotten our points uh back in january but everybody at nutrient ag solutions has been great their their understanding of what's what's going on here so thank you again to the Siegs. and um you know we, we can still go run good like that's the crazy part about the speedway race we'll probably ride around keep the car clean until the end and if there's uh, a, a small group left hopefully then we'll go race at the end probably 
Thanks for being so gracious with your time, Ross. And you, you better get to the driver's meeting. I think it's starting right now. Now. Am I going to start in the back? Am I going to have to start in the back? I, I think you're going to have to do that either way, <laughs> hey, Adam. That, that dude overcomes everything. He's already overcome one bump in the road. Can he get up front and win this baby? Jeff Green, seventh in both races here, driving for the Sieg team last year. No worries for Ross Chastain today, right? After a huge debut weekend, the sports world is buzzing about the XFL, and this week should be even better when Tampa Bay takes on Seattle today at 5 Eastern on Fox. And, of course, you can see it also on the Fox Sports app. And I love what we've done here at Daytona. We have created our own gridiron, and at <laughs> 200 miles per hour, you can cover that 100 yards in one second. One second. Let's go to the garage in Regan. Well, no, Greg, it's going to have to come from a little bit further back than what you might want to today, but you are really confident in this race car. Looked fast yesterday. Yeah, it was really good in the draft. I, I liked it out front, so I'm not sure where we're starting uh, for the race, but hopefully it'll be up front. The car's really, really good in the draft, and I'm amped up. I, uh, I've been drinking some Black Rifle coffee this morning. You guys get that at uh, Bass Pro Shops anywhere around the country, but, uh, yeah, super excited. Daytona, this is a world center of racing, Regan, so... Going to give it all today. Checkers are wreckers. I'm going to have a pretty aggressive mentality and try and get to the front as quick as I can. I'm not sure that you need coffee. You're always a pretty high-strung guy anyways. But tell me what your plan is when this race does start today. Are you going to look for your teammates? Are you going to look for other Chevys? What do you guys do when you get on the track? I'm going to try and be, uh, be pretty aggressive and definitely try and help the Chevys whenever chance I get. Um, junior Motorsports as a whole, we want our cars top four out there and have a Chevy in victory lane. So... My goal today is, is to win the race, and if we can do that, I'm going to be pretty pumped up if we can get some confetti on the car and maybe get a cool race version Lionel diecast from it. Good luck, Noah. You think he takes his coffee black or he puts something in it? What do you think? I think it's a little something in it. Yeah, one and one like you and I? Yes, one and one. Here's the grid. What do you see on page one, the first four rows? I see a bunch of guys that are thinking a Daytona victory would be the biggest day of their life, and... I just, I think it's just such a great mix of experience and, and youth and guys that have opportunities and are going to try to take advantage of them. Joe Graff Jr. starting fifth for Bobby Dodder. There's Noah Gregson, row six with Brandon Brown. Justin Allgaier trying to win a plate race for the first time. <laughs> How do you pick a favorite, Adam? I mean, I, I'm going through these first eight rows and I can't find one guy that I think's head and shoulders above the rest. Row nine on back, there's Josh Williams, Jesse Little, a couple of underdog drivers. And there you see Jeff Green qualified that car on row 12. He will vacate the seat for Ross Chastain, who missed the race. Ross will have to drop to the rear. There you saw Brett Moffitt looking for a big win here in Daytona. Josh Palicki in the 99 car. Austin Hill won the truck race here last year. He'll be competitive in that 61. And with all the qualifying drama, big for him to get in because they missed the race here last summer. It would have been the debut race in the Xfinity Series for Shiggy Hattori. So here's what's ahead. Next, it's Daytona 500 final practice. The last tune-up for the granddaddy. More Xfinity Series coverage happens on race day. That's in the studio at 1.30. And we're back on the air from Daytona with these Xfinity cars with Brad and Boyer. We'll see you later on. Keep Keep it on FS1.